All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna get the this piece of steel cut. So I've got it drawn out here exactly what I want, and I'm gonna leave this piece hanging off the edge there. You can kind of see that. So this is just an old piece of steel from the side of a desk <clears throat> from work that we were throwing away. So I'm gonna repurpose that and use that for my switch housing. So let's get to cutting. I don't really have a great workbench set up right now, so this is the best I, I can do. It rained all day yesterday, so this all this wood is pretty wet <laughs> that I'm going to be cutting it, cutting on, so you don't have to worry about it catching on fire. So we got nothing on fire, which is good. You can kind of see how that edge is. And then you might be able to see it. This line right here is where I'm gonna bend. I'm gonna attempt to bend this up. So then you guys will see, this will sit in the corner and this will be bent up. And then this, this section right here is where I will attach the switches to, so. Let's go figure that out. Let's just get a dry fit here right quick. Let's see how this piece is gonna work. There is, I do need to make a notch in it. So let's figure out where that notch needs to be. I need some sort of marking utensil. Sharpie. Let me see if I can find my Sharpie. Okay, so this piece right here, I need to notch out around that so it can sit back in this, this little groove right through here deeper. And then once it sits in there, I can take this screw out right here and then drill a hole where that screw would be right yeah, I think it's like right around here, right around here somewhere. And then I'll, that'll be able, that will hold it in there tight. And then if I need to, I can use this piece also. So if you, this cab, if you don't have the glass windshield, uh, it's just a piece of canvas kind of like this down here. But, and so you utilize these little brackets if you don't have the glass, but since I, I have the glass in, these are unused and I might be able to utilize those to stabilize it. So we'll try that. Yep. I think what I need to do is cut this off because this, this point is hitting that back part. So I'm gonna lop that off. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do, focus on is bending it up next. And then um, once it's bent up, I can see where I need to cut it and shape it to get it to fit up and, and kind of mold to the contours of the ceiling. So let's do that. All right, so here's what I came up with. I'm gonna use my backhoe dolly that I made because it, it has a two inch square tube steel. And then I'm gonna take this clamp, the old trusty jet 12 inch woodworking clamp, <laughs> and I'm gonna clamp it. Let's see if we can do this live here. 
I'm going to line up my line that I want to bend it on. We're still on our line pretty good. Let's tighten that down good. Kind of a gradual bend. I'm gonna grab my hammer and kind of just tap along here and see if I can't shape that a little better. Yeah, that's kind of ugly. That's probably a bad idea. Let's see what we're dealing with. What do you think? Pretty gradual bend. Pretty ugly what I did. Hammering it wasn't a good idea. Let's give it a little test fit. which is mounted on that. So that'll be the next thing is getting, I need to take, if I can take all these switches out of here and then just be, be left with this plate and then I can put the plate up there and trace it out and uh, get an exact fit. Might be easier said than done. We'll see. I think it's it's either an aluminum or a steel plate. Doesn't feel like plastic. Okay, I just got all of the uh, switches out of this uh, trim ring, beauty ring here. And so now I'm gonna just set it on here like this. And then I'm gonna trace out in each one where these holes are and then just cut it out a little bit bigger because they give you, looks like about a half inch all the way around of wiggle room. So <clears throat> I'm gonna trace all these, just kind of the, the outline of it all. Cut it just a little bit bigger than all that with the grinder. And then I'll have my opening for my plate. So we'll go do that. Okay, I just got everything traced out. Let's go out and cut it.
Hey, hey. So these nails or these screws stick through quite a bit, you can kind of see there, but not terrible. Okay. Now we have to figure out where we're going to mount <coughs> the fuse panel. So I have this, I have this fuse distribution block put the fuses in between here and then you have your positive on this side and your negative over here on this side so thinking it'll just kind of mount somewhere in here like this This all runs back behind this bracket right here. And then I'm gonna come up this, this uh, support right here, all the way up to underneath here. Come over around this, up this support, and into and then th this right up here is where the switch panel will be. All right, so I came off of the battery right here. This is going to be negative. And I got my positive coming off there. And I've routed it down th around through here. Uh, where am I? There we go. It's a little dark in there. But then it comes up this over to here up here and then I've got my power and ground from the battery but I think what I'm gonna do I watched another video the uh, last night and I guess right up here in this blue where this blue tape is there is um, switched power instead of always on power and I think I'm gonna hook into that instead so that this that's the switches up there that I add are only on when the key is turned on. Yeah, I think that'll help bet with battery issues down the road. So let's get that fixed up. All right, so I'm going to try to incorporate some of these. I had forgotten that I bought these kind of quick disconnects. So I'm going to hook up. So this one is the hot's a female on this one. So I'm gonna go and buy a splice, some splices. Make a good splice there. And then that'll go on that one. And then if I ever need to take this thing off, I'll have a quick disconnect on it. So that I can, you know, this'll just be coming out like this. Off of that. And it'll make taking it if I, for the next accessory that I add down the road, it'll make uh, removing it all a lot easier. All right, just got my shrink, heat shrink on. Got a splice, all this will come up and then I got it coming down to one of these connectors. which I just bought these on Amazon. And I'll get this all zip tied up there nice and then this will just kind of sit back in the corner like that. All right, guys. So I had gotten to a point where I was ready to hook everything up and I couldn't quite figure out how I was going to get it to only turn on when the key was on. So I did some research and I found out that I needed one of these. I needed a, this is a Hamilar brand, Hamilor and it's got it's basically a contactor a relay whatever you want to call it you got your high voltage running across here and then so positive from the battery will come onto this one and then positive 
will go up to the switch switch panel and then from here you have you can plug in a wire that runs underneath the Kubota BX23S dash straight to this and then a ground and when you turn the key on it will send power switch the power on via these two little spade connectors right here and then bridge this gap uh, and close the connection and send power up to the switch. So we're gonna get this baby installed right now. Okay. This is how I ended up mounting it. So I got, this goes up to the switch. This side goes to the positive post on the battery. This right here is the ignition. When you turn the key on, it, it sends a signal to this, this relay. This is grounded to the battery. I'm sorry. This, is, this goes to the positive post here. All right, so then I just left, a, I left some extra wiring here. I'll eventually button that all up. Um, this, I may have to may come up with a better solution for this. It's just a, a spade terminal down in between that bolt. I need to get that tightened up. Yeah, that's not even tight on there, okay. So then it comes down here, I got zip tied here, I got an inline fuse, I've got zip tied right here, 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 right under here, comes up, another zip tie, another zip tie, zip tie, and then it's zip tied there in the corner. So this connector right here. All right guys, so here's the final product. I only have this one hooked up right now to the wiper. I don't have my um, lights hooked up to it yet because I still have down here on this switch. Let's see if I can get down there to it. This switch right here still controls and it's got its own um, relay and everything. So I didn't really need to do anything with it. Um, but I do want to put some new lights up front and that's what I'll control with this up here. And I'll get push back up there. And this is, this is how I ended up attaching. Um, there's a bolt and then there's, I just I can get my finger up underneath this uh, this hole right here, and I can hold on to that nut while I tighten this down. And this this really locks it in good. It's not going anywhere. I mean it's it's part of the the cab now at this point. Yeah, this one this wire right here comes over to the to the windshield wiper, and it's got a it's a jacketed. Um, cable with positive a black and a red wire right inside of it and this is kind of nice too this flap that for the door kind of covers up these wires right here comes all the way down and then so you don't even see these these wires it's a little dark let's see if I can there we go so you can't even see these wires underneath this flap and then you start to see them right when we get to right here and they go down and yeah shout out one lonely plumber if you haven't checked out his channel that he has a brand new kubota bx 23s and he makes uh does leather work send me this keychain so if you haven't checked out his channel head on over there one lonely plumber so i think that's going to finish this video here for the switch mount I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I would like to maybe pull it down and give it a coat of black paint, maybe orange paint, I don't know. Uh, so take it all down one more time and um, give it a coat of paint. And I'll 
post some pictures on my Instagram. I, so I have an Instagram. Um, I also have a TikTok. And um, obviously on YouTube. So if you haven't checked out my Instagram channel, go, go over there and give it a follow. If you haven't checked out my TikTok yet, go over there and give it a follow. I post a lot of content throughout the day. Um, that's it. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and do that. Hit the like button, and I'll see you on the next one. Talk to you later.